Butamuses. So this is a request from John and I'll put the comment right here. And he wanted to know about the difference between the God experience and the void. And I'm going to include ego death in here. So these are really cool topics to talk about. This was in reference to the video that was uploaded before this one where I talk about what the mushrooms wanted me to tell you on my last 10 gram dose trip. And this is the first time I've been to the void. So let's talk about it. So when we talk about God, I have a problem with that word because of how I was raised and I have a problem with religion. To me, my experience of God is the experience of going to the construct, going to the core, seeing the helix of it and the fractals coming off of it and like the Mandelbrot looking stuff coming off of it. The universal hum and everywhere that you go, no matter where you go and what you do, there's this continuous sense of omnipresent sentience, love, hum, construct, wisdom, knowledge, geometry, and you can't separate it. I can't separate it. So the, the universal geometry and the construct of reality and the hum and the love moving through all of it to me is God. I had a trip that is in my trip playlist where I talked about uh, the trip I was in. I was in Switzerland and in that trip, I went to the intergalactic council and then I had to go to the architect. So it was the architect like, God, I don't know. Whether it's a simulation, whether there's one person that's God, whether there's a universal consciousness, whether there's such a thing as karma and multiple lives, I'm still trying to sort of figure that out. And, and I don't even know that I care to make a decision about that. I don't think that's the point of being here. I have had assuredness that this was a game. I have had assuredness that I've been here many times before. I have had assuredness that this was the collapsing of timelines and a massive earth awakening. I have had assurances that this sentience and wisdom is interplanetary, interuniversal, and that there's all these different beings and it's gonna keep going and that there is some larger purpose to it all. And all of this may all be true. I just don't know where I fit in with it, but that love that is in all of it to me is God. And it just cripples me with tears and with awe and with almost wordlessness at it and its presence and witnessing it, being around it. To me, more than tripping, more than the colors, more than the entities, which I love, and I'm gonna make a video about the entities, more than any experience tripping, it's meeting that love, meeting that universal wholeness. Being in that presence feels like I'm going home. It, if that's where I've been, no wonder this feels like hell. And if that's where I'm going, um, yes, please. <laughs> also, I understand this is the one of the greatest tickets in the universe and I am so happy to be here now and I'm so ecstatic about it and I've got so much to do with so little time to do it. But that's like another whole video. That to me is God. What we are trying to express as God. And then there's ego death, which is important to the void. For me, I never understood ego death because my first experience was eight grams and it was just a lot of pain. I do it on camera. You can see it on amnitadreamer.net. The whole thing is on video and you can see me going through those waves. And to me, I thought that's just the come up. That's just what the come up is like. I've done, I've done smaller doses now. So now I know what ego death is. But at the time, I just, it was intense pressure, 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 pressure coming in waves. And everyone was harder than last and have to really, really breathe through it. And it felt like I was getting squeezed. And then I finally pop. <laughs> 
and and then when I pop, it feels good. And, and the pop was me no longer being aware of being human and just winding up catapulting elsewhere. And I have a lot of videos about that first trip. So I won't go back over here. I have since done six grams, five grams, three grams, and then 10 grams. So I now, no, nine grams and then 10 grams. So I have like the whole range now. And I get it now, when I, when I did three grams, I just got annoyed. I just had anxiety and it was just annoying and like that was loud and I was here and there was barely some colors and overlays, but mostly it was just loud and I just felt anxiety. So I won't ever do that again. But five grams was beautiful. It was lovely. I never really left my body. I was aware of being human the whole time. I would close my eyes and get all the beautiful things, see the a couple of entities, whatever, mostly just beautiful things, doing work, being able to work with it and have conversations, but I couldn't actually see them, but I knew they were there and I could just walk and go get water or do whatever I needed to do. But I was fully in the humanness. For me, I think to have ego death, to leave, I need a, at least between six and eight grams. Now I know ego death is just being fully there and not here anymore and not being in a body and not being aware that I'm human anymore. And in the one before this last trip, I spoke about myself in the third person. I said she when talking to the intergalactic council or whatever and pleading my case for things. And I talk about that there, but I, I was saying she, she, she <laughs> and telling them, you know, she's not going to keep playing the game and and but then I would tell them well don't threaten me like I'm I won't go back there I was switching back and forth like I carried my sentient consciousness with me but the human was a separate entity from me and so I would speak about the human in the third person eight gram trip I was able to be there on the other side but aware that I was still this human with this name, with these life situations, doing these life things and negotiating on behalf of myself when they were doing things to me, it was to me, this Amnita Dreamer person, right? And then when I did the nine in Switzerland, that's when I was switching to third person. This time around, this is why I wanted to talk about all this and bring me to here. This time around, when, I mean, it, it happened quickly, uh, eight minutes, and I started hearing the hum, and within another two minutes, I guess, I was, my eyes were closed, and I was, I was in it, but I still felt myself sitting on the ground, and the very first thing that happened was Ganesh, which is why the elephant, the decorated elephant, was on the thumbnail of the video before this one, where I first talk about that trip because she, I call her Ganesh, but maybe that's not what her name is. Maybe we all have a different version of her, but she was decorated, you know, around the forehead and her whole body was decorated. Plus she had all the 3D geometry moving all over her body the whole time, but she just walked straight up to me and she said, welcome. And then she just turned and walked away. And that's how they welcomed me. I was still aware of being in my body and still aware of being here. And I was like, oh, wow, cool. And then some entities showed up and they were like, ah, and they gave me all this beautiful geometry. And I'm just sitting there watching all the geometry or whatever. And I was like, yeah, that's really beautiful. This is really strong. Like these really strong, like these colors, really bright colors with that, you know, the geometry and it's just moving and it was beautiful. And they were like, so what do you think? <laughs> I said, it's really beautiful. Is that all there is? And they said, what else did you think there would be? What, el what else is there? And I was like, well, I don't know. I kind of thought about more than this. Like, is that, is this all you're going to do? Is this all you've got? And they were like, well, no. I was said, well, then bring it. And they looked at each other and they looked at me and they were like, are you sure? And I said, yep. And then, Whoa. And I was in the void and I didn't have thought. There was no sound, no feeling, no thought. 
which is cool. It, it's weird to have no thought because I'm one of those intelligent brainiac thinker people. So like there's never no thought and sometimes I can like try to make no thought, whatever. I don't, I don't care whether there is or isn't. My thoughts don't bother me. But it was weird to be in the void and literally nothing in my head. I didn't have a past or a present or a future. I didn't have a name. I didn't have a meat sack. I didn't have a story. I didn't have a human. There was my consciousness, whatever that is. There was like, there was a consciousness that I was aware of here. <laughs> and that's literally all there was. There was nothing. Then all of a sudden, I had a thought of, holy shit, I made it to the void. <laughs> it's like all excited that I made it to the void. <laughs> and then I could hear breathing sounds, which I assume was me hearing myself breathing from the inside. But I was so excited to be in the void. And, I, and then I'm like, oh, wait, is the void supposed to be a bad thing or a good thing? <laughs> For like just a second, I thought that. And then I was like, holy shit, man, I just want to stay here. Like, what a break from being human, because this life's just been a son of a bitch, and I'm tired. And what a break. It's just, wow. Like, this is better than any waterfall or beautiful places around here, you know, or in Canada. Like, this is, this is better than all the earth shit. And then I remember thinking, oh, wait a minute. I think in other trip stories, when people went to the void, like, that meant hell was about to happen. And then I was like, oh no, is this about to get bad? And then I thought, no, you can't think that or it'll get bad. <laughs> and then I said, I think I'll sit in lotus position and just not think again and be here and enjoy the silence, you know, and just being in the void. And then I did, and then there was no more thought again. And then I heard a deep breath and then a and then my favorite entity <laughs> showed up. And we'll talk about the entities in the next video. And this time instead of, they talked to me in two different ways. They use words, <laughs> speaking like slowly in normal human time. And then they think in thoughts and thought packets and whole concepts. And this time, they that one entity thought in whole concepts and said, I'm sorry you had to come here. Thank you for being brave. I'm very sorry for what you are about to have to endure. It's going to be like surgery. I love you. It's going to hurt me to watch you suffer. And it is my honor to serve you. And the love, whew. but that would be the end of the goodness. And from that moment on, it was hell. It was what people I think would say was a bad trip. Maybe I'll be able to talk about it at some point, but it's only been a, about a month. And it was just three hours of, of no break, just hell with no, without a break. And so I can't yet, can't talk about it yet. It was beautiful. And had I stopped that trip, I would never have what I have right now, which is the largest growth I think I've ever experienced. The most beautiful sense of connection to the other side. How short this life is, how much I need to do. My unlimited potential and power to create the life that I want. How thoughts become things and how quickly I can think and make. The interconnectedness of everything, the silliness of a lot of it, the seriousness of it, my power to feel hurt and move past it within seconds or moments that I don't have to get stuck on a feeling or a thought and I just move it. It's all really profound and beautiful. So I would do it again. I'm going to do it again. They told me they weren't finished. So I have to go back and do it again. And I will, because if this is what I got just from three hours of hell, like um, sign me up, I'll do it again. Because they took out not only 
the last couple of decades of trauma, but they took out lifetimes of trauma. They took out childhood trauma, um, inter interrelational trauma. And it was necessary if my timelines are collapsing and if I'm not coming back this way again. And I kind of have a feeling I'm not. <laughs> so just saying that makes me terribly sad. But I can't imagine getting to live here with this amount of knowledge of there and not forgetting it and getting to live with it with every breath. I can't imagine what that's going to be like because I'm already like that half the time and getting to just be at peace, more peace than I knew was possible in my body. Like all oh, this place where trauma used to be isn't, and just the fresh air that's there now. It's just, um, it's pretty cool. And I want to know your experiences with these and your opinions on these things, because it's, I, I mean, I live for that stuff. Like it's so hard to have to weed through the crappy comments. Um, and so it's, it's beautiful when I get to hear what your experiences are of these things, because I'm a new psycho knot. All of my stuff is at amityadreamer.net. Buy me a coffee. If you like the work I do, you'll notice that my videos are demonetized because I don't make money here because of censorship. And when I try to monetize it, I get censored. And then all of a sudden I've got strikes on my channel. So I'm just trying to like not make money here. I depend on you donating to me through buy me a coffee. Link is in the description or the first comment. I love you, beautiful people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah.